Hey everybody! In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at how to set up, install, and configure AdGuard Home on an OpenSense firewall. Now in this video, I won't spend too much time on what AdGuard Home is or why you might want to use it. If you're interested in those details, please check the video description for a link to my blog where I did write quite a bit about that. In addition, this video does come as a follow-up to a request I had from someone a while back on how to set this up. So if there is anything specific that you might want to see a video on, please feel free to let me know in the comments below. That being said, let's just go ahead and jump right into it. So for this video, I built a quick lab in EVE-NG that just has a single OpenSense firewall that has a LAN side interface and a WAN side interface. On the WAN side interface, the only connection that we have is out to the internet. And similarly, on the LAN side interface, the only connection that we have for now is a single Ubuntu Linux box that we're going to be using for testing. Now I will just call out that it's important to note as we work through this video that the LAN side network is 192.168.1.0/24, with the OpenSense LAN side gateway interface having a 192.168.1.1 address and the Ubuntu Linux box being .101. So with that, we'll just jump over to the OpenSense box and go ahead and log in. And so for the purposes of this video, I am currently running what is today the latest version of OpenSense, which is 22.7.9. And so if we wanted to go ahead and install the AdGuard Home plugin, the first thing that we're gonna go ahead and do is go over to System, Firmware, Plugins. And if we search for AdGuard, uh, well, looks like there actually isn't anything there. And that's because OpenSense doesn't natively support the AdGuard Home plugin, but that's okay because as it turns out, there is a community-based software repository for OpenSense that contains a handful of additional plugins, including AdGuard Home. So all we have to do is set up and install that repository, and then we can go ahead and install the AdGuard Home plugin. So in order to add that community-based plugin, we'll need to connect to the OpenSense command line. Now we can do that two ways one of which is connecting directly to the OpenSense console itself. This would work if you had a physical OpenSense server and a nearby monitor and keyboard. However, for the purposes of this video, we'll walk through how to set up and configure SSH so that we can connect to the OpenSense command line remotely. So in order to set that up, we will go ahead and go over to System, Settings, Administration, and then scroll down to Secure Shell. Now by default, OpenSense does not come with SSH or Secure Shell enabled, so we will have to check the box to enable Secure Shell. In addition, by default, OpenSense is only configured to do key-based authentication, not password. So we will have to check the box for Permit Password Login if we'd like to be able to log in with a username and password. I'll also mention that if you don't have an additional user account created on OpenSense with administrative privileges, you might be just logging in with the default root user account. OpenSense also will deny root logins, so if you are using that account, you may need to check the box for permitting root user login. However, I would recommend that you create a specific administration account rather than using the default root user. The last thing I will mention before we move on here is that OpenSense will listen on all interfaces for SSH traffic. Likely you do not need it to be listening on all interfaces, so in this case, I'll set it to only listen on the LAN side interface so that only internal users and clients can access this SSH server. With those settings being set, we'll just drop down to the bottom and click Save. Now we can open up an SSH client, in my case I'm using PuTTY, and I'll log in with my administrative username and password. Now the first thing I'll do is I'll go ahead and change to the root user and type in the root password. And so if you were logging into this with the root username and password, your prompt is gonna look a little different. In fact, it'll look like this, where instead of just getting a normal Linux prompt that you might be used to, instead you're going to get the OpenSense shell. In order to connect to the underlying operating system shell, we will just use option 8 for shell. Next, we'll hop back over to that GitHub page for the community repository and copy out that fetch command, which is going to query the URL that's provided, pull down that repository config file, and save it locally in the package repository list on the OpenSense machine. We can go ahead and validate that that file did pull down successfully by using the cat command, which will display the contents of that file. Next, we're gonna have to tell OpenSense to go ahead and refresh its known packages from the repositories. 
so that it'll go ahead and reach out to this new repository and pull down any new packages it might be able to install. We'll do this with the pkg update command. And pretty quick, we'll see that it will reach out to all of its known repositories, including our new one, and pull down all of the updates. So as long as that all gets set up correctly, we can go back over to the OpenSense web interface. We'll go back up to firmware and over to plugins. And once the plugins refresh, we should see AdGuard Home right up at the top here. So as with all other OpenSense plugins, all we'll do is click the plus icon on the right side of the screen. In this case, we will get a warning stating that this software package is not supported by OpenSense itself. It is from an external vendor or community. And so we'll just go ahead and click through that and let the package install. Once that's done installing, I'll go ahead and click on the OpenSense logo in the upper left corner just to go ahead and refresh the screen, which should reload the menu items, after which we can go to Services and down to AdGuard Home. And the first thing you'll notice is that all we have is an Enable button, which is currently unchecked, so AdGuard Home is not enabled. Since this is a community-based plugin, we're kind of limited on the configuration options that exist in the OpenSense web UI itself. So once we click Enable and Save, we will have to jump to a separate web interface in order to set up and configure AdGuard Home. So to do that, we'll have to go to whatever our OpenSense machine is, but on port 3000. So for example, I mentioned earlier that my lab is using 192.168.1.1 for its LAN side interface. So we'll now go ahead and go into our browser window and update that URL to use that IP address, but with port 3000. It's also important to note that by default, OpenSense will use SSL where AdGuard Home is just plain HTTP. And so now we'll be presented with the AdGuard Home setup wizard. This is gonna be just a quick couple of steps in order to get us set up and going. So to begin with, we'll just go ahead and hit get started. Next, we'll have to set up what we wanna use for the administrative web interface, which is the interface that we're using right now, as well as the address and port for the DNS server, which is what clients are gonna to use to look up domain names. Now by default, both of these are going to be set to listen to all interfaces. However, more than likely, you're not going to want to enable your administrative web interface or your DNS server interface on everything, including your outside WAN interface. So what I'll go ahead and do is on both of these, I will select only the LAN side interface, which again, for me is 192.168.1.1. Now for the web interface for AdGuard Home, it does also default to port 80. You're welcome to keep it on this or set it to 3000, which is the port that we're currently using. However, if you do set it to 80, please note that you might have to go back into the OpenSense administrative settings and disable the default configuration, which will redirect any port 80 calls to 443. One other thing I wanted to mention on the DNS server side is that if you happen to get a warning when setting this up that port 53 is already in use, it may be because you have something like unbound DNS already enabled on OpenSense, which is the default configuration. So there's two things you could do, one of which is go back over to the OpenSense UI and disable Unbound DNS in favor of the AdGuard Home DNS server. The other option, which we'll get into towards the end of the video, is to use both servers, where you would configure AdGuard Home on a separate port, like for example, 5353, and then configure Unbound to DNS to forward all queries to this AdGuard Home DNS server. But again, if that's a configuration setup that you're interested in, please forward ahead towards the end of the video where we'll cover that. After we're done with the setup on this page, we'll just go ahead and scroll down and click Next. Next, we'll be prompted to set up an admin username and password for logging into AdGuard Home. This is going to be a separate set of credentials than what we use in OpenSense. And once we're done with that, we'll save and hit the Next page, where AdGuard Home will give us a couple of different options for how to configure clients to use this DNS server. In my lab environment, OpenSense is providing DHCP services to provide IP addresses to the clients on the LAN side network. And so for us, all we'll need to do is make a quick change on OpenSense, which we'll get to in just a couple of minutes here. So we'll go ahead and click Next, and that's it. The setup is done. So we can now just go ahead and click Open Dashboard and be taken straight to the AdGuard Home dashboard. So we'll log in with the new username and password that we just created for AdGuard Home. And in my lab environment, I did get an immediate warning up top saying that there was a new version of AdGuard Home available. Looks like we can just click the Update Now button to update this directly from the AdGuard interface and not have to update it from the OpenSense side. 
Once the update is done, we're just left with our AdGuard Home dashboard, where because we don't have any clients configured to use this yet, we're just seeing that there's not a lot going on. So we'll come back to this dashboard once we get some stuff going and take a look at what it looks like then. Now I won't be going through all of the configuration options and settings in AdGuard Home, but we'll take a look at some of the most common things that you're probably gonna wanna look at and set up. So the first thing that we will look at is the DNS block lists. And we can get to these by going up to filters and DNS block list. On this page is where we're going to be setting up the different block lists that we want AdGuard Home to pull down and install locally. These are the, gonna be the domain names that on our home network, clients will no longer be able to access once this is enabled. And so depending on what you're looking to block, we could be blocking advertisements or tracking or certain social media services or malicious activity and that type of thing. The decision on what block lists to add in here and what you wanna block is gonna be up to you and your preferences for your home network. By default, AdGuard is only gonna list the two that are shown on the screen here with only their default DNS server enabled which has about 51,000 domains listed. And while it was updated just a little bit ago, we can also click the check for updates button to have AdGuard Home go out right now and re-query for any new domains. In addition, if we want to add new domains to our block list, we have two options. So if we click the add block list button in the bottom left corner, we can either add a custom list or we can choose from a provided list from AdGuard. Now, if we go ahead and click choose from the list, we'll see quite a list of different block lists that AdGuard Home does come pre-configured with. And so again, depending on your preferences, you can select any number of these and click add. In addition, if you had your own custom block list that either you built or maybe you pulled from someone else who's built a custom one, you could use that use a custom list to provide the URL directly to another block list and AdGuard Home will pull that in. Now on the opposite side, we'll take a quick look at the DNS allow lists. Now on the DNS allow list page, the only thing that we can do is add in a full list from an external URL. We can't add in individual domains that we want to allow. So we won't change anything here, but what we will go down to is the custom filtering rules, which is where I feel like most people will probably spend some time when they need to unblock or block specific domains. And so on this page, we can set up custom rules for different domains. And if we needed to test something, at the bottom of this page, there is also an option to check filtering for a specific domain. So for example, if we went ahead and searched for 0x2142.com and hit check, we'll get a little plain window that just says that so far it's not been found in any of the permit or block lists. However, it does give us a one-click button to just go ahead and block that immediately if we wanted to. But for the purposes of this video, we'll go ahead up and add in the syntax to block this domain. And once we hit in apply, we'll go back to our check at the bottom. And now our little result window is a light red color indicating that it is blocked and says that it is from custom filtering rules. And again, we're given a one click button to unblock that domain. However, we're never gonna wanna block 0x2142.com. So we'll add that to our allow always list by adding two at signs in front of that entry. Now, if we go back after saving, we'll get a nice little green box saying that that is added on an explicit allow list, again, from our custom filtering rules. One last thing I wanted to point out on the configuration side is the ability to block services. Since so many services these days, like Amazon and YouTube and Google and all of those things, use so many different domains for all of the different services that they offer, it would be maybe unrealistic for you to sit there and block every single individual one. Now, there are certain block lists that you can find on the internet that are going to come predefined with all of those domain names. However, AdGuard Home also does have a one-page list of a bunch of popular services so that we can one-click block access to all of those services. This could be handy if you're not comfortable with certain services being accessed in your home for security or maybe parental control type of reasons. So for the purposes of this video, I'm just gonna go ahead and block all of YouTube's services and hit save. Now that we've done a little bit of configuration and we have some things to test, we'll go ahead and set up OpenSense to allow our clients to use this DNS server. So again, in my lab environment, I am using OpenSense as a DHCP server, which means it's providing IP address configuration to all of the LAN side clients. So in order to tell clients to use this DNS server, we'll go down to services and over to DHCP v4. 
and I will edit the LAN side configuration. And under this, we can see that DHCP is enabled on this interface. And we'll go down to DNS servers and add in the OpenSense IP address, which is 192.168.1.1. And then we'll scroll down to the bottom and click Save. So I'll go ahead and bring up my Ubuntu Linux box real quick. And the first thing that we'll do is try to hit YouTube.com. And hold on a second, didn't we just block this? Why can we still get to it? Well, it's important to note that because of the way that DHCP works, once a machine gets an IP address and gets a configuration from its DHCP server, it's usually also told how long it gets to hold on to that IP address and configuration before it has to ask for a refresh. So right now, our Linux box is still holding on to its prior configuration and hasn't gotten assigned or pulled down that new configuration from OpenSense. One way that we can validate that is by going up to a terminal and using the nslookup command on youtube.com, which will query and re return a list of IP addresses that that name resolves to. And so sure enough, if we do use that command, we're immediately given back YouTube server IP addresses, which means that we're definitely not using the right DNS server. So one of the easiest ways to go ahead and reset our DHCP configuration real quick is just to disconnect and reconnect our network interface. So on my Ubuntu box, I will go up into the corner and click on the network and hit disconnect. And then go ahead back up there and reestablish that connection. Now, if we use our nslookup command, we will get a response of 0, .0, .0, 0.0.0.0, which means that our DNS server is in fact blocking that request. And of course, we can go back over to our web browser and refresh the page just to double check. And sure enough, we can no longer get to youtube.com. However, just to double and triple check everything, let's make sure that we can get to 0x2142.com. And sure enough, we can, because we did add that to a permanent allow list. So if you're new to running DNS level ad blocking services, like AdGuard Home or something like Pihole, one thing you might not be used to is that a lot of times services get blocked even when you do still need to access them. And so sometimes there can be quite a bit of troubleshooting when you're trying to get a certain page to load and maybe it's not loading right, and you have to try to figure out why a certain domain is getting blocked that that website is relying on. So in our example, let's say that we just configured all of this in our actual home network, and we accidentally clicked that block all of YouTube button, and someone in our house is now upset that they can't watch their YouTube videos anymore. And so one way we can check this real quick is if we go back over to AdGuard Home, we can check the DNS query log, and this page is going to show every single DNS query that this server receives. And the first thing we see is we're going to see a bunch of domains on here from our client that all look like they were permitted and processed. So everything looks good. If we had multiple clients, we could search for that client, or if we knew the domain name that might be blocked, we could search for that domain specifically. But let's say in this case, we're not really sure what's being blocked. We can actually select the drop down over here that says all queries and select only blocked websites. And pretty quick, we can see that it looks like youtube.com is being blocked. Now, the cool thing about this too is we do have a one click button on the side to unblock the site. Or if we drop down the button, we can also unblock only for specific clients if we needed to. This could be handy if, again, for like parents or something like that. You wanted to allow certain IP addresses on your network to be able to access certain sites, but block services for all other ones. The other handy tool that's good for troubleshooting and just overall monitoring of your AdGuard Home instance is going back to that dashboard. Now, if we go back over there this time, it looks like it's a little bit more interesting now that we've had some DNS queries hitting this server. So we can see so far that we've had just under 200 total DNS queries, 30 of which have been blocked by our filters, and we can get a little bit more detailed statistics so we can see all of the different statistics broken down by a couple of categories. We can also see which clients are using the most DNS queries. And right now, since we only have one client, all of them are coming from that one IP address. And last but not least, at the bottom, two interesting things that I like to look at is seeing the top permitted domains and the top blocked domains. So these might be something that you're going to want to check somewhat regularly just to see if there are certain things being blocked or permitted that you don't think should be and modifying your DNS allow and block lists accordingly. So the last thing that I want to cover in this video is a couple of special configuration circumstances. 
So I mentioned earlier that perhaps you might want to still use the unbound DNS configuration within OpenSense, but also use AdGuard Home. One reason that you might do that is because unbound DNS has a lot more DNS specific options and configurations that allow you to do a lot more advanced configurations than AdGuard Home. And while Unbound does support DNS block lists and allow lists, AdGuard Home is probably going to have better dashboarding and reporting tools. So you don't necessarily have to use just one or the other, you could use both of them together. So the first thing that we'll jump into real quick is we'll go ahead and edit our AdGuard configuration. Now this is important to keep in mind too, because if there are any misconfigurations earlier on the initial AdGuard setup, the only way to edit the AdGuard configuration for a lot of those options is going to be through the OpenSense command line again. So in order to edit some of these configuration settings, we'll bring back up our SSH client from earlier, and we'll edit the file in user local AdGuard home, and it's called adguardhome.yaml. This is going to be the primary configuration file for AdGuard home. And so again, we can see the options that we had set up earlier with the bind host and port for the admin web interface being set to 192.168.1.1 and port 80. In addition, just below, we can see the DNS section where again, we are binding to that LAN side interface and on port 53. But let's say for example, that we accidentally misconfigured and we did want to use AdGuard Home with unbound DNS. And so we need to run AdGuard Home on a different port. So we'll go down under the DNS section and update our port from 53 to 5353. Then we can go ahead and hit the escape key, press enter to leave the editor, and then enter again to save changes. Now in order for these changes to take effect, we will have to go back over to AdGuard Home and restart the service. Once that's restarted, I'll go ahead and go over to Unbound DNS and enable the Unbound DNS service. And that is enabled and listening on the LAN side interface. So we'll go ahead and hit save and then apply changes. And so if we go back over to our Ubuntu Linux machine, we can test and see that we are actually able to get back to youtube.com. And that's because right now we are only using unbound DNS and unbound is not filtering any of that traffic. We'll need to tell it to use AdGuard for its upstream DNS server. And so the way that we'll do that is within OpenSense, we'll go to query forwarding under the unbound DNS configuration and we'll add a new entry. Now in here, if there are only a specific subset of domains that you wanted unbound DNS to check, we could add those in here. But in our case, let's just say that we want to filter everything through unbound. We'll leave the domain field blank and then we'll set our server IP to 192.168.1.1 and port 5353 which will be for the AdGuard Home DNS service. Then we'll go ahead and click Save and Apply. And so as a final test, we can jump back over to our Ubuntu Linux system and refresh the YouTube page to make sure that our DNS queries are being filtered by AdGuard Home again. And sure enough, looks like we can no longer get to the YouTube page again, so we know that those URLs are being filtered appropriately. Okay, and with that done, I think that's about all I wanted to cover in this video. I did want to mention again that there is some additional information in the blog post. You can find a link to that in the video description below. And I also wanted to say one more time that if there is any other content or videos or configuration tutorials, that type of thing that you're interested in seeing, please let me know in the comments below. Your feedback and input is always appreciated. All right, and that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching.